believe it's going. Yes. All right. So six weeks now, the sixth week here of the uh, of the ambiguous major. And these are basically dealing with an auction where the response hand in his first response uh, bids a major. Right. So it's like one something and then one of a major. Um, opener has no idea what that hand is worth, what that major is worth. Right? It can be four plus of the major, four plus cards in that major suit. It could be four, or it could be all the rest of the cards in that suit. And it can be, you know, a minimum response hand of five or six points, or it can be all the rest of the points in the deck. Right? So that's why we've kind of we've kind of had a little fun. We've called it in the ambiguous major, because I want it to be a big red flag. Okay. Um, we want to be able to take advantage of a couple of devices, a couple of gadgets, to find a fit in that suit if it's there, and to safely land in a good contract if it's not there. Right? When that heart, the uh, major may have five, and opener may have three of that suit, and there may be a fit there. Alternatively, response hand may have bit a spade and. Um, when one diamond, one spade, um, opener replies one no trump, we'd like to know if there happens to be a 4-4 four, four fit in hearts. Right? So we've seen these things. Now, today, just briefly, really briefly, because I, really, I don't really find this to be exactly like um, um, the ambiguous major gadgets we're using, but it's some sort of variant, I guess. Um, and that is uh, a, a gadget called force suit forcing. And the reason why I don't, we're not going to go over it a lot, because it has lots of different applications. Um, let me uh, get a one loaded up here. And put myself back in. dragging a little bit today. All right. So this is the ambiguous major, right? This was spade bid. One over one, four plus spades, six plus total points. Um, unlike hands where you bid, rebid one no trump, right? Oftentimes you will have an unbalanced hand, sometimes with the minor, sometimes with a heart suit. But you're not going to bid one no trump here. Instead, you're going to bid a diamond. I mean, sorry, a club. Okay, basically showing, you know, five, four or better in the minor suits. And then North bids two hearts. Now, this is an artificial bid, and it's sort of like, this is sort of the cousin to new minor forcing. Um, in fact, we should really look at North's hand instead. And I will, in fact, jump over there. Okay, so I had bid, right, I, I had responded with my spade suit, and I've got a game going hand. Uh, partner bids two clubs, right? If he'd bid one known trump, we would have used new minor forcing, right? But instead he bids two clubs. Now with game going values, I can still look for a 5-3 fit in spades. And that's by using this gadget called force suit forcing. Now this is an artificial bid doesn't say anything about hearts, doesn't say anything about spades, it just puts a game force in place. 
Okay. Now you'll find that you'll be able to use this this gadget for a lot of different reasons. Like for instance, I, what if I had six spades here and I wanted to look at uh, for slam or something, right? I could put a game force in place right away, and um, and and uh, and later show the spades again, looking for uh, just a couple, right? And then, um, anyways, there are all sorts of things that will come up, and you'll find this is important. It's very important in trying to find a three note trump game, um, which is what's going to happen here. So with force suit forcing, the first priority, right? It's a gadget, so you know, in all gadgets, you know, they have continuations. The continuations are this: with three support in the major opener, shows support right now. So if he had three spades, he would bid them right here, two spades. Notice no reason to jump up and down now, because the two hearts is gathered, has gathered, has set a game force in place. So simply bidding two spades here would show three. If if opener doesn't have um, support for responder's suit, then they are supposed to bid two no trump if they can stop the heart suit, right? This heart suit says nothing about hearts in North's hand, North in my hand, right? So two no trump is a promise that they can stop a heart. That's the first thing the robot says, stop her in a heart, okay? We don't need to worry about it, this thing getting passed out, right, because two hearts established a game force. Now, once they bid to, to no trump, if I don't have more spades to show or another big suit to show or any concerns about a different suit, I just bid three no trump, right? That's all. It. And that's how we ha can just simply get to, um, to a three no trump game, all right? Let's see if I can claim this and put a stop to it so we can see the whole hand. Maybe not. So you can see in this situation it was kind of like new minor forcing. I, I was checking back to see if there was fit for spades. When there wasn't though, the responses set us up for looking at a three no trump game. And, uh, I don't know why it didn't let me claim. It was doing it the other day, but whatever. All right. So now we can see the whole hand. So there's a spade, right? A diamond opener, spade bid. South did not have three spades, right? Which I'm sorry, three spades. So it bid its second suit. I'm sorry. Start again. South started with a diamond. I bid a spade. South then bid its second suit, which was clubs, right? At two clubs. And then I put an artificial bid in, right? Which is of two hearts, and that's the fourth suit, the un, un, unbid suit so far. And that establishes a game force, and the priorities in response for opener were to show three, to bid two spades with support for spades, um, to bid two no trump if they could stop hearts, and apparently they believed their king jack was sufficient, um, and we end up getting the three no trump. Now, the third response, let's say that South didn't have a stopper in hearts, but instead believed that it, the fact that, that, you know, that King Jack wasn't good enough, they would then make one more bid, right, we're going to gain, which would basically further describe their hand, okay, give them a little bit more information about their hand, and in doing so, they will have denied support for spades, they will deny a heart stopper, right, and here, of course, if they say they had Jack Doubleton, they would probably have bid clubs because they hadn't really told me they had five clubs yet. Okay. So three basic responses. Support with three, no trump if you can stop it, and if you can't do either of those two, then what you want to do is further describe your hand. And we do this all knowing that we're getting to at least game. Um, let's try this one. South opens the diamond, right? And I've got seven, 12, 19 points, right? So I'm, I'm immediately thinking slam on this hand. Immediately thinking slam. And I bid a spade. 
and partner shows me two clubs. Now, partner could have three spades, right? He he's only got you know he's only got about nine cards and you know at a at a minimum he's got a, probably five four five five in in the minor suits and so there's room for him to have three spades. So it'd be nice to find that fit. But I also know that we have a club fit here. Um, so, anyways, what I want to do is I want to put the game force in place, and I do this, and I know that I'm looking for a slam, right? I am looking for slam because I got 19 points, and I got the ace king, right? And we've talked about that before. You know, a control, all the controls in a short suit are are pretty darn useful, right? I get the two no trump bid, two no trump bid, saying, um, saying, uh. <clears throat> I can stop the heart suit. I don't have three spades, right? So we could obviously play three no trump here. The question really is, can we play, can we play um, um, six no trump? <laughs> right? Because we've got seven, five is 12, 19 points, seven, nine, yeah, 19 points. Huh? So, you know, we're looking at at least 32 points here. So. At this point, I'm going to make some sort of move towards slam. We've either got six clubs or we've got six no trump. Given the fact that that South has shown a heart stopper, you know, I'm I'm liking the idea of being at six no trump. And you could get there however you wanted to, um, partnership wise. I, I'm I might just blast to six no trump, thinking it's there and not really wanting to give away any more information. Right. Should be there. We've got lots of points. Oh boy, off he goes again. I'm going to end that. So that's the basic idea with force suit forcing. Just just try one more, two more. Um, these are these two hands, I believe, will be. You know, that was interesting. A little bit more like we're used to in new minor forcing. Um, Sal starts with the diamond. I have nine, ten, twelve. 17 points, a really good hand again. You can bid a heart, right? The ambiguous major. He bids one spade. Okay, now this should show an unbalanced hand, maybe five, four in the diamonds. Otherwise, it makes a hell of a lot more sense just to bid one no trump if you're balanced. Um, but the fourth suit here, right? I want to see if he has three hearts, and the fourth suit is clubs. So I bid clubs. And that's for suit forcing. Now he'll show me hearts if he has them. All right, so this is delayed support for the heart suit. Okay, so we now know we have five three. Chances are we are. Chances are my partner is either stiff in clubs or void in clubs, right? Because he's showing nine cards at least in the minors. I mean, sorry, nine cards at least in diamonds and spades. I'm assuming that he would jump to one no trump, which I, now that I think about it, it's the robot, so he wouldn't necessarily do that. Um, right. So now I, I know we have a heart suit, and I can make a move towards slam if I'm interested. Um, and um, I think I might be. And we would do that by whatever gadgets and bidding methods we have as, as a partnership. Okay. And then one last one of these. Eight, 10, 12 points. I guess I'm opening this one. I'm going to open it a club. It is a heart bid. Now, I probably would bid one no trump here, and this will turn it into a uh, um, force a uh, new minor forcing case. But just because we're here and talking about forcing forcing, let's say I would bid a spade instead because I have four, and then that causes robot to bid two diamonds. The continuations one support hearts with three, two bid no trump if you can stop the diamonds, and if you can't do either of that. Show something else about your hand. We don't need to worry about getting the game or somebody passing because the two diamonds establishes a game for us. And of course, here I'll bid two hearts because right, I have three of them. 
and then we get to four hearts pretty easily. I'm not going to uh, pass because then robot will take off on its own. So anybody have any questions about force suit forcing? We're looking at just a sliver of the ways that it can be applied. Um, and those are just the ways that sort of connect to our three theme for the class of the ambiguous major. Any questions? If not, then what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to review, um, and we're going to do it in kind of a hopefully an interactive fashion. Yes, that's true. You'll have all. I mean, once they open their mouths, you have all sorts of ways to continue to force the auction. Um, so what we're going to do is this. I am putting the. Kib option on user controlled. All right, on user controlled. This means you have to pick whether you're going to kib south or north. Um, and I would suggest maybe if your last name is in the latter half of the al alphabet, why don't you kib north? If it's in the um, the uh, the uh, first part of the alphabet, why don't you kib south? Okay, and I'm going to be in both seats. But if you, if you move, if you, if you figure out how to kib yourself, then um, I'm just getting people, a lot of people who just want to sit. So I'm just going to say, go ahead. We'll help them instead. Forget my suggestions. You can still pick one side or the other. We'll let uh, we'll let some people play it instead of we got people that seem to want to get jump in there jump in there turn down a bunch of people and I thought I was going to run it but go ahead anybody want to sit up oh, here we go Donna and uh, and Taz all right. And um, let's, we're just going to review some of these, some of the things we've talked about. Um, like I said, if, as a kid, you might get more out of it if you pick one, one hand or the other. Okay? Otherwise, you're going to be looking at all the hands like I am right now. All right, so let's kind of look at the, uh, um, if you're on a, well, I guess it doesn't matter anymore. Go to the blue box options. Yeah, I guess you'd still need to be on a laptop or a PC. You probably can't do this on an iPad. Go to the, the, the you know, the, the blue box with the hamburger in it, the white hamburger. And, um, and if you go there, you should be able to pick out the kib option on which seat to do this. I haven't used this since the changeover. I'm going to see if I can figure it out from my iPad. Um, the other way you can do it, if, if it's not in the blue hamburger box, you can click on the name of the seat, on the name of the person, and, and select kib. It can give you the option to just kib that person. On, there we go. Lisa says, on a PC, right-click the seat, and that will let you um, get there. And if you're on, an, if you're on a, a tablet, I think you're out of luck. You'll just have to watch both hands. All right, so let's go. <laughs> oh, you did? Well, Marsha can get in there in a bit. Taz opens a club. And we see the ambiguous major. Four plus hearts and uh, a minimum hand or, or the rest of the 
points in the deck, the ambiguous major. And Taz should have known what to rebid when she bid clubs. Nice to think about what your second bid is going to be before you make your first bid. There we go. Absolutely. A minimum balanced hand showing 12 to 14 points and denying four hearts. That's what none, one no trump says here. It doesn't deny three hearts, though. Okay, now this is where we're going to use the new minor forcing. Um, why don't you undo that, Donna? I can't do it. I can't do it. Okay, so one no trump, and now to check back on whether or not um, Taz is bidding one no trump. And we use the new minor forcing. Right? Now this is an artificial bid. It would be alerted at the table. And it asks partner to show delayed support for hearts. Um, presumably they don't have spades, but it could also show spades. Um, if they don't have three hearts, they could bid spades if they had four. And if they have neither of them, then they will deny it. Now I like to play that you bid two no trump. With eleven, with twelve, thirteen points, um, and you just and you take a jump bid to three no trump if you have, if you have uh, fourteen points because two diamonds shouldn't come out of the box unless it's an invitational hand, right? And that will allow you to bow out of auctions earlier, um, and also get to uh, get to good contracts without too much work. We got four, eight, nine. Three twelve points. So Taz is saying twelve to twelve to fourteen points, and I've got I'm on the bottom end of that. And Donna, who has uh, fifteen points, can simply go to game. Yeah. And we we won't make Leslie play it, but that's the auction. That's the classic. Ambiguous major and the new minor forcing uh, response. Let's try another. Don is opening nine, ten, fourteen points in a balanced hand. Leslie bids the ambiguous major. Right? This all works best if red flags, you know, little sparklers go off here and when you see that major response to your minor. Because that red flag is going to cause you to remember that you have some gadgets. And it'll make you start looking for them. And then when your partner bids something, you won't be at a loss because you will have thought, oh, this is an ambiguous major auction. But um, Donna's first job, of course, is to define her hand better. Opener's rebid. Um, the classic thing that you want is to define your, your hand for your partner on your second bid. And that's really easy to do with balanced hands. All right. And then we're going to use the, undo that, Leslie. This is a situation where you're going to use the new minor forcing. You don't need to bid hearts here. In fact, if you've agreed to play new minor forcing, bidding hearts here shows a minimum hand with five spades and four or more, and four or five hearts. 
but showing minimum values. And you obviously want to you want to force your partner to bid. And what you'd like her to do here is either show you three spades, which she can do, or show you four hearts if she can do that. Right? And if she can't do either one of those, then she simply bids no trump. And she's got support for you. Now she didn't jump, which should show, because if she has 14 high card points, she can jump to the three level. Seven, nine, 10, 14 points. So the correct bid here would be three spades, right? The rebid now showing support for the spades and showing 14 high card points. But it won't matter here because of course, Leslie is gonna go to uh, four spades with her good hand. Okay. So if you use the jump response to new minor forcing, you can separate, when you have that 12 to 14 balanced hand, you can separate out the good hands from the bad ones, right? And the, or I guess we should say the best ones, right? 14 high card points are something that makes you think, think, think it's equivalent to 14. When you have a hand that if partner has an invitational hand, you now know that you want to go to game. Right. Partner using the minor forcing is always promising at least. Uh, at least invitational hands. Um, okay, let's try this one. Lost the voice. Start speaking. No. Um, okay, voice should be back. And um, but the voice, you know, it it always goes on and off. You're much better off just going to the Zoom page, the Zoom, which. It's up here somewhere. Can somebody drag that uh, drag that down there? Oh, here I got it. There's the zoom. That's better off. All right. Okay, let's try this one. One more of these, and then we'll move on. Here, let's um, um, if we if you could back that up, Donna, open that thing up. I know it's a crappy hand, but open it. I'm afraid I'm in the camp that says open all twelve point hands. Um, I mean, the re the definition of one no trump is twelve to it's twelve to fourteen balanced. I mean, I, so I don't know why. I mean, this is all I got queens and stuff, but you know, it's it's a minimum balanced hand. Um, give your partner the king and jack of spades, and you got a spade suit. Give them the king of diamonds, and you got a diamond suit. So open it up. We get a spade bid, and now we now we get to define our hand with the rebid. Opener always tries to to find their hand better and in best case scenarios limit it as tightly as possible which of course is the one no trump bid 12 to 14 balanced now Taz has still some hope and um, Taz, we're just playing new minor forcing, so not not two way, and I'm not sure that's you got a two way there. So just bid two clubs instead, the new minor. 
or the other minor. Maybe it should have been called the other minor forcing. Okay. So two clubs here would be asking partner, forcing partner to bid at least one more time, and uh, asking them, hey, do you have three spades? If you don't have three spades, do you have four hearts? And if you don't have that, show me your range. Okay. Now here, we have two ways to show our points. Right? We're not going to be able to bid a major, but we can bid two diamonds, or we could bid two no trump. So naturally, we can bid two diamonds with 12 or 13 points, or we could bid two no trump with 14 high card points. Either way, we convey what we need to, to, to partner about the strength of your hand and the fact that you have no majors to bid. So I would bid two diamonds here. This is saying to partner, I have 14 points. Go ahead if, you're, if you only have an invitational hand. Whereas two diamonds would say, partner, we should get out of here cheap because I've got a bad 12-point hand. So Donna's best bid here is to bid two diamonds. Right? And then Taz, who only has an invitational hand, can simply bid two no trump and end the auction. Right? So the better auction here would be right, one diamond, one spade, one no trump, two clubs, new minor forcing, and two diamonds, saying I'm a balanced 12 to 13 point hand, and I can't support your spades, and I can't bid hearts. And after two diamonds, Taz, who probably has lost interest in game, will then bow out at two no trump. All right, so... Why don't we trade out of there and let's look at it in one of our other gadgets that we worked on. Somebody want to get in there? And uh, somebody else want to sit? Tazzy, Taz and Taz. It's like Saturday night with Dave Hardy. All right, again, I would suggest giving one hand or the other, um, but it's up to you. I've left it. I've left it up to you. All right, so let's see what we can do about the ambiguous major on this hand. Robot throws in a bid. So Camille bid one heart, the ambiguous major, right? Promising uh, four plus hearts. And all the rest of the points in the deck or maybe just five points. And here, Taz, Tazzy, um, we have a different bid that we can use. Beth, I'm sorry, I forgot your name for a second there. I'm sorry. Um, we have another way to show three support, and that's been given, we've gotten this opportunity because they injected a bid. And this, is, this, is, this auction is the one that you really need to be aware of the ambiguous major on, because otherwise this double is so confusing. Either the person who can bid it will forget to bid it, or the person who bid the major in the first place doesn't recognize what it is. Okay, but this is a support double. Promising three hearts. Now it says nothing about strength, right? It just says, yeah, hey, I got three hearts. Now our responses are pretty simple, right? which is, and it does have to be alerted. Two hearts, and two of the responders major or less, right? One, like one, one spade, one no trump, two clubs, two diamonds, two hearts, all of those bids... Um, would be, well, forgive the spade for now, but one no trump, two clubs, two diamonds, two hearts. Those bids are showing a minimum hand. Okay, Two hearts, in other words, is probably constructive, may not have another bid, so it may only be four, I'm going to play in a 4-3 fit, which we're going to learn not to fear, or she's got five and she just doesn't think it should go anywhere else. 
If she had a spade stopper and only four hearts, she might bid one no trump instead, right? Again, minimum. But in this auction, this is saying, partner, unless you can make game opposite a constructive hand, it's probably in our best interest that you pass. Right? And this will happen a lot, of, a lot of these auctions, right? Because if we're passing out at two hearts, they're going to get in. And then someone will have to make a decision. Are we balancing two spades or are we going to defend two spades? And they're going to defend. Let's try another one. One heart, and now robot bids. And this gives us gives us extra bids. When the opponents bid, we get a couple of extra options, right? We get the option to bid three clubs, which we might do in certain situations, and we get the op the opportunity to double. So you don't need to feel bad when they bid. You know they've shown you that they've got a, a club suit, and uh, they give you the opportunity here to double promising three hearts. Now, the double doesn't show range, um, point range, right? So this could still be a hand that would accept an invitation, which is, I'm sure, what Camille is thinking about right now, which is whether to bid two hearts and bow out, or whether with this shapely hand bid Three hearts is an invitation to go to game. We got ten points. Um, we got king ten nine eight in six cards in a nine card trump suit, but a couple doubletons. One of them had by the king of clubs, which is right in front of east hand, and east hand had bid, um, had bid clubs. So. I think Camille downgraded her hand based on the King of Clubs. And then t Beth has gone ahead with her 8, 10, 12, 14 points and bid again. Now, this bid is, I mean, I mean, after the two hearts, Beth, it's possible that this two that your partner only has seven or eight points. Might have had just enough points to bid. So probably a little aggressive on openers part. After a two heart bid. I think the best option is to pass out unless you have a maximum hand. Unless you think you can make game opposite um, a minimum hand, I think you're done. Two hearts is saying I don't have an invitational hand. Now, I think it's some bridge judgment on Camille's part as to whether or not they did have, um, whether or not she had an invitational hand. She obviously didn't like the fact that it appeared her king of clubs was going to be stuck between the ace and uh, uh, underneath the ace. And as it turns out, her partner has the queen. So all the king does is promote the queen. All right, let's try another one. Now these support doubles will work, generally speaking, up to about the person up to about two hearts. You can double two hearts. If you start doubling two spades, right? Problem is you may be asking your partner to bid at the three level. Now. I play that with some partners, but we're very cognizant of the fact that if we use a support double in that situation, we better have a few extra values, something a little special to justify making our partner bid at the three level. So we start with the club, one spade, and we get a double. Now once again, the double gives us opportunities. Right? And in the context of the ambiguous major, the opportunity is to redouble to promise three. Right? We would just raise if we had four. We redouble if we have three. Now, obviously, this auction is going to be contested because, lo and behold, West responds to the double. And Mill jumps this time with 12 points and a stiff in the diamond suit. I think I'd be just going straight to game, but this is invitational, and Tassie gets to treat it as invitational.
and goes and will accept that invitation. It's got some good middling values there. Look like they'll pay off. All right. Let's see, I think I had one this morning. What about this one? No, this is not it. Let's try this one. As a, it's the only time you can support redouble, right? This double or redouble for support can only be used in one situation, and that's on openers, um, on openers response uh, second bid, right? Or the, think of it as the fifth bid of the auction. She, she opens, you know, her left-hand opponent passes, her partner bids a major. And her right hand opponent bids something either or doubles, right? And that's the only time that you're going to get a chance to use a support double. It's the fifth bid in the auction. If it doesn't happen then, it doesn't happen anywhere else. And nobody else sitting at the table can make a support double except for the opener, right? And so here, and this is why we have to recognize it, what we got was a support double over two diamonds saying, yeah, I got three spades. As he jumps to game with a void and diamonds, that her partner even has an ace for, so she gets a pitch. Right, and we got this big fit in clubs. Yes, should be good. It's a nice bid. All right, how about this one? We got a diamond opening. One spade and a two club bid to opener's right. Okay, see now, here there's no reason not to, yeah, this will be the last hand you're going to bid. Uh, there's no reason not to double here, right? We want to find fits in, in major suits, and our partner could have five spades. So what we want to do is double two clubs to let them know that we have three to help them. Leaving Camille with a choice. And she chooses to support opener suit. So she's probably something like 4-4. Four, four. Obviously she's not interested in spades. And now the opponents jump in again and uh, and uh, Beth will make a decision on whether to compete to three diamonds. And there you go. And this is a pretty good auction. So the gadget gives you lots of lots of different information. Let's get a couple new one, couple more people in and we'll do one more set of hands. Thank you both for doing that. Couple more. Don't make me jump back in. I got used to just sitting here on my hands. It's getting easier, not harder, by the way, if that helps. Jesse's in there.
and Joan. Perfect. All right, let's try this. This is another situation that comes up where the opponents bid and they give us a chance to show how long our major suit is. And in this situation, the, the, the opponent that sticks their nose in is to the left of opener. It's to the left of opener. Okay. So, um, Jesse, go ahead, open. And here we get West bidding a heart. Now, this allows Joan to show the length of her spade suit. Okay. She can bid, she can bid one spade to show five, or she can double to show four. Now this is just one aspect of a negative double, right? And this is the aspect that deals with the ambiguous major. And here it's sort of the having to bid the ambiguous major is preempted by the fact that someone has stuck in a bid, right? Giving us a chance to make a negative double. Over a major suit, this double will absolutely promise four spades at least. And it can be made with even um, a weaker hand. Okay. So there in, we're not interested in the spade suit, and uh, and Jesse correctly passes, having really nothing more to show because she because they is holding uh, the um, uh, minimum balanced. So no need to bid. We don't have to bid all the time. They lock it up for two two hearts, unless anybody wants to bid more. And the question is, did Joan have another bid? Could she make it at the three level? I guess there's also a question of whether she should have bid him to begin with, but uh, this is okay. I'm not sure which is the right way to go. I think I would double just to look for the major spurs before showing a seven card club suit. But I think I might stick, I think I might bid three clubs after the two hearts. Um, should be a fairly safe bid. Why don't you lead a card there so that people who are kibbing one side or the other can, uh, oh, they can. Okay, we're going to bid three clubs. Cool. I guess there's a danger there. You might get too high, but it's an awfully nice suit. Right? Um, no partner's not covering your hearts, but it looks like you've got some work that you can get done in the spade suit. So. So this is a negative double, negative double. Let's just do one more. These are fairly straightforward. Um, make sure I grabbed a new one. Yeah. So the double showed four of the other major. Now what happens in this situation? West has stuck their nose in with a overcall in the second seat, so at least five or more hearts. And this is going to give North an opportunity to show the length of her major. And by bidding the spades, we're promising five. Now this auction without the interference would have gone one diamond, pass one spade, pass one no trump, and then new minor forcing would have come in, right? Because Joan has enough values to use new minor forcing. But instead, she gets the opportunity to bid showing five spades. Her partner then shows a minimum hand with uh, probably four diamonds and three spades. And over that, Joan will jump to game. Oh, no, she didn't. She decided not to. Maybe that's the right decision. Okay, but you can see the negative double will give you that opportunity. Um, actually, the real problem here is that you have three hearts and your partner has three hearts. Um, so the negative double gives us a chance to basically avoid the ambiguous nature of responder trying to show the length of a major. 
because that second seat, when they jump in with a major, you can now double to show four or five with really weak values, or you can um, you can bid your suit out now. Now the key thing about it is to uh, make sure you have the values to bid. Um, make sure that uh, you don't force your partner too high. And certainly in these cases, these were really easy bids. All right. Anybody got any questions? All right, so I hope this is helpful. Um, I, these are gadgets that, that almost all non-beginning club players will ask you if you can play. There'll be a discussion about negative doubles. There will be a discussion about support doubles. There will be a discussion about new minor forcing. Okay, so these are, I think of them as gadgets that are sort of must-haves, right? Um, Yes, in theory, I think they have to be, I might be wrong on that. I believe they have to be uh, alerted. Um, somebody who's been played live recently might be able to tell me if that's true or not. Or you could just look at a convention card. Negative doubles are in red. They are, need to be alerted. Um, I'm drawing a blank right now. Certainly playing on, I mean, playing on online, I, I routinely say that, you know, I just self-alert it just because it seems like a fair thing to do if you're not playing against really good players or really experienced players. Um, so I'm thinking about, thinking about, uh, thank you, Joan. Joan says she doesn't think it needs to be. Um, and I think she's probably right, but I can't remember. So thinking ahead, um, okay, great. Thinking ahead to, to uh, January, I, I'm thinking about us turning our turning our attention back to some card play, but this time uh, doing it from the defensive side of the table. Um, if that's something that uh, would have some interest. Um, I want to tackle defense a little bit differently than I've seen it tackled before um, in the bill. Um, it's not going to be a class about signals It's at all. In fact, we're essentially going to rule out any signaling. Um, instead, we're going to talk about the tools, the skills that you need to play good defense, which means being able to identify the tricks that you can take in your own hand identify the potential tricks that are in your partner's hand, identify how the declarer is going to go about making their contract, essentially drawing a plan. It's my belief that, teach, that beginners who don't know how to play defense and all they've learned how to do is signal are not doing anybody any good. Right? The idea is that you learn how to play defense and then you, then you learn how to give signals. And there have been great players through the years who do not signal. Do not signal. Um, in, in a sense, the idea of signaling is, um, I mean, it's always been there. It's a, a thing in, in WIST. And, and I have no objection to signal. In fact, some partners I signal a lot. We have all sorts of things that we're doing. But my point is this. I think that we can learn how to play defense better. And once we get an idea on how to play defense, then our signals will start making a lot more sense. Right? Then our signals will actually be worthwhile. So I've got about 35, 40 hands right now, and I'm trying. It's this one's going to be a little bit more work for me than, than our last classes, especially these bidding classes. Um, and there may not be as many class notes because I don't know if I can pull the hands together and, and what I want to talk about, and also make make notes. And we'll start to probably, uh, I haven't looked to see what the first Wednesday is in in January, but if it's far enough away from New Year's Eve, because I know we'll all be out partying. Um, 
Yes, the Saturday tournaments are going to roll right through the holidays. Maureen and I talked about it, and we decided to just let, let them keep going. So please keep coming. We'll, we'll keep doing the movies. I hope those are working out for you. I'm trying to keep them to 15, 20 minutes so that people can watch the movie without having to invest a whole lot of time and trying to get them out uh, the next by noon the next day. I'm getting better at it. Um, 